вернемся в эфир. Как, где, на каких платформах, мы пока не знаем. И как это все будет. Я думаю, что, друзья, мы должны на этом закончить. Конец сегодняшнего эфира и пауза небольшая, которую делает телеканал «Дождь». Но пасаран. Но пасаран. И нет войне. Ну, точно нет войне. What's up, everybody? Major Retired Richard Ojeda here, and Putin is a dirtbag, and he's surrounded by dirtbags. From the oligarchs of the Russian state media, these people have destroyed Russia. They've waged war in Ukraine, and now they're done. They went from celebrating the start of the war with raucous cheers and calls for champagne to now actually calling for an end to the war to be released from the financial grip of the sanctions. And I guess the least of humanity can only be affected when you hit them in your wallets. And boy, is President Biden hitting them hard. But this is truly a shocking change. These TV hosts who are paid mouthpieces of Vladimir Putin with the purpose to disseminate disinformation far and wide across Russia to take a sharp turn on the rhetoric is a sign of significant change because we know if these sentiments reach broadcast on Russian state TV, then there is a lot wider gulf of division growing between even the upper classes of the Russian population and their pseudo Emperor Putin. You served as the, uh, the, the sort of punching bag of, these, of some of these uh, pundits on Russian television, uh, there to give the view that they could then try to knock down. Uh, and you know some of them. What do you make of what they, what they were saying last night? So I was the punching bag, but I also punched back. And people like me are the people who have disappeared from these shows over the past few weeks. So three weeks ago, I could have gone on and said exactly what Karen said, and I would have been yelled at for it, um, but I would have been able to say it. The fact that it's a big deal that someone is able to say it for 30 seconds on Russian TV now shows just how much things have changed. They are really nervous about controlling this message, and so they are really clamping down on anybody saying anything that doesn't fit the party line. And Julia, uh, what what are you what is your assessment of where the propaganda wall is now? Is is it stronger than it was uh, before uh, this Ukraine this war started in Ukraine? Are there cracks in it? What is happening to it? The propaganda wall is higher than ever, but I think it will cause the opposite effect because people will start wondering why things have changed so drastically, not only in terms of uh, the economic uh, downfall Russia is facing, but also why all of a sudden all of these alternative sources are not available. And having grown up in the Soviet Union, I know things like that made us wonder more about what they were hiding. So I think that that will be the actual effect of what Putin will achieve, exactly the opposite of from what he's trying to accomplish. Of course, the bulk of Russian TV are still trying to shove all this under the rug. They claim that the bombing of the maternity hospital in Ukraine was fake news. I guess all the photos of women being carried away from the rubble was staged. But then again, we've seen here in the States that it doesn't take a clever argument by any means to fool some people. They also suggested that the Ukrainians are actually shooting and killing one another just to be able to blame Russia. Wow. Even the GQP hasn't taken that far of a reach yet. I'm sure they're taking notes, though. Russian's foreign minister even goes as far as to claim that Russia never attacked Ukraine. Repeated lies at the maternity ward and children's hospital were never bombed by Russia. But that's where things are leading. Putin is having to rely on his most trusted puppets to take to the airwaves because even the people that have a glimmer of conscience within them are starting to falter, and their idea of shamelessly groveling before their dictator at the expense of mass casualties in human life. And the lies are having to grow more audacious and purely ridiculous. One host even accused the United States of starting the war and that we are the ones indefinitely prolonging it. All of this shows that the Russian propaganda machine is held together with spit and balling twine at this point. Public perception is starting to swing, even in a nation so dominated by biased misinformation. The sanctions are hitting Putin's buddies in their pocketbook, and that will get them to turn on their own mothers, and general population is seeing through the obvious media fabrications. This, folks, is how evil empires fall. They crumble from within in revolt against disgusting leadership. It's awful that evil leadership is allowed to endure, to fester, and boil to a point where they're a blight on society and invoke war on the people of the world. But ultimately, a nation is simply its people, and when the people are used and abused, they will realize things don't have to be so. 
That's what this feels like, folks, a turning point. If Russia State TV is cracking, it's only a sign of a much deeper fissure below. So stay tuned as we follow this important news, as I have a feeling this is going to develop fast. Putin is running out of time, running out of money, and now losing some of his most ardent supporters. Sappers clear the way, airborne all the way.